Cervical cancer has impacted almost every aspect of my life. My job, my marriage, my mental health at stages. Because I had an aggressive form of cervical cancer, uh, the best option was to cut my uterus in half. And it was quite scary as a 26 year old to have your, what felt like your womanhood cut out. <laughs> Um, and to be told that when I came round, I might be infertile. So it was just surreal to be able to have a baby despite the odds. My story was lucky, but it could have been very different for me. And I really want to get the message out there that this is something that we can prevent. Cervical cancer is such an interesting story because while there are 250,000 women who die from this cancer every year, it is indeed both preventable and able to be diagnosed early. Cervical cancer is caused by the human papillomavirus or HPV and there are lots of different types of HPV. The key discovery was that some of those types of HPV can cause cancer at a variety of sites in both men and women. And then that's led directly to the development of a vaccine and directly to HPV as a better screening test for cervical cancer. Countries like Australia are really looking imminently now at the potential for elimination of cervical cancer. But the real challenge is to deliver these innovations where they're needed the most to help protect against the 600,000 cases happening every year, predominantly in low and middle income countries. Just imagine just imagine that a patient who is just 25 years old, got married recently, has not given birth at all, then all of a sudden presents with bleeding and you know the patient is going to die. You are trained to save lives, but here's the case, most of your patients are dying within six months. We're losing a woman every two minutes and this should not happen, especially when we have all the weapons we need to fight it. We need resources, in addition to, of course, the support that we can get from the international community. If we can deliver 200 million doses of vaccine in 10 years, we can immunize the whole population over the next 30 or 40 years and reasonably expect that within my children's lifetime, we'll have no more cervical cancer. We're delivering vaccines to young pre-adolescents. The peak age of risk is in the 40s and 50s and beyond, so it will take time to have an effect. In the meantime, cervical screening has an incredibly important role to protect, in fact, the hundreds of millions of women who are already exposed to HPV and who are already at risk globally. So the key message is that HPV vaccination and cervical screening initiatives have to work together and be scaled up together in low and middle income countries. We have the tools, but we call on governments of all persuasions to take those tools and implement them with full commitment. Failure should not be an option.